In the workshop, how to fit a chime whistle to the Castle Steam V6 boiler. I have a few steam whistles in my workshop at the moment, and this really excellent small whistle and valve is from a company called Microcosm in China, and their website address is currently on screen. Take a look on their website, they make really nice things, and the steam parts that they make work very well. This one's a bit too loud for the camera's microphone, I'll turn it down. Here's another whistle from the same company, and it has a valve that's quite nicely detailed. And whilst on the subject of nicely made things, get a load of this. This is a Microcosm 3-Ball Governor, and the quality of the manufacture speaks for itself. This is a beautiful thing. In a previous video, I showed another type of Governor, but this one's really artistic. What a lovely thing. This Governor would look really good mounted on a column at the side of a horizontal mill engine. This video is about fitting a chime whistle to the Castle Steam V6 boiler, not showing governors, but I couldn't resist showing you this. It's very nice indeed. And now it's back to the chime whistle. That's the chime whistle I'm going to fit to the V6 boiler, and this is the valve that's going to operate it. This chime whistle is manufactured by a company called CME Engineering, which is near Wakefield in West Yorkshire, UK. These are available from Blackgates Engineering in either 3 chime format or 4 chime format, which is obviously larger. And do be aware that these whistles take a lot of steam to operate, but as this Castle Steam V6 boiler produces a lot of steam, it will have no problem at all blowing the whistle. I'm going to mount it on the hot manifold, this is the superheater manifold, so the steam that feeds the whistle will be hot and dry and should give a good note. I remove one of the blanking plugs, and here I'm using a centre drill to make a hole in the centre of it, and I'm going to drill all the way through with a quarter of an inch drill. I don't want to go all the way through the blanking plug with a 3 8 diameter hole, because it will weaken the fitting. The idea is to drill all the way through with a quarter of an inch diameter drill, and then drill part of the way through, tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. And as always, the tapping size drill that I would use is two imperial drill sizes down, from 3 8 of an inch. This works very well with ME threads, but it will not be suitable for threads that are much coarser than the normal fine ME type threads. In this clip I'm tapping the hole using a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch tap. And as you can clearly see, I'm doing this by hand, not under power. It's easy enough to do it by hand, it's only a short thread. Although to save some time, I did put the lathe into reverse to withdraw the tap. This was quite a painless and very simple operation, and now all I need to do is refit the blanking plug, which is not a blanking plug, it's actually a bush now, back into the fitting as you see here. And to make sure it doesn't leak, I put a little bit of Loctite 542 on the threads, before tightening up the bush on the main boiler fitting. I also applied some Loctite 542 to the thread on the main steam valve that operates the whistle and I'm taking great care to make sure that I do not cross-thread the whistle valve into the bush. And how did I know where the valve was going to end up? Well, I did a dummy run first before I applied the Loctite. So I know now that all I have to do is just tighten the entire assembly, but mainly I'm tightening the bottom part of the assembly. This is what's called a crushable washer, because as you tighten the fitting against the crushable washer, it literally does what it says, it crushes, which allows a certain amount of movement, so you can position the fitting exactly where you want it to be. This other fitting which holds the steam valve also has a crushable washer, but I'm still applying some Loctite 542 to seal the thread. And don't forget this is Loctite 542, which is hydraulic seal, just thread sealant, it's not a retainer, so you can unscrew this if you want to, but if you fit this by accident, using Loctite 601 or 603 or similar, the component will be very difficult to get out of the fitting. So just bear this in mind, always use Loctite 542 and not a retainer when fitting the fittings to a model boiler or steam engine. In this clip I'm finally tightening the valve to put it into the correct position. I did notice that the top part of the valve was quite loose on the main threaded fitting, so I removed it, applied some Loctite 542 to that as well and refitted it so this valve won't leak. You have to be careful if you're using Loctite 542 on boiler fittings such as check valves or clack valves, because if you apply too much 542 and it goes down the hole and contacts the ball on the seat inside the check valve, then the ball on the seat will not seal properly. 
This is a very common problem. You have to be very careful with 542 also because it's quite an effective paint remover. In this clip I'm temporarily fitting a nut over the threads to allow me to slightly adjust the valve into perfect alignment without damaging the threads. And that's really about it. There's a couple more things I need to do. One is, I nearly forgot, I need to fit the whistle to the valve. And again, a little bit of Loctite 542 will make this steam tight as well. And without wishing to repeat myself, even on a whistle, do not apply too much 542 because if it goes up the hole into the whistle and blocks up any of these holes, the whistle won't work properly. This whistle is fairly overscaled for the size of the boiler, but I'm not bothered because it looks so good. It's really well made and a boiler like this deserves a good whistle. And all I need to do now is open the valve to the boiler and apply some air and press the lever. I look forward to hearing this whistle blowing by steam power. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.